o'clock tomorrow night. So let's uh, just debate some of the issues right now, ahead of that debate, with me here in the studio, the author and uh, journalist Rachel Shabby, who's uh, against airstrikes, and in favour from our Oxford studio, Professor Anthony Glees, who's from the Centre for Security and Intelligence Studies at the University of Buckingham. Anthony, thanks for being with us. Well, thanks both of you for being with us. Let me ask you, first of all, though, to make the case for airstrikes. Why do we need them? Um, I mean, Jeremy Corbyn, for example, the Labour leader, has been saying not only Islamic State fighters will be killed, but innocent civilians, women and children, will be killed in these attacks. Well, I think one would take Mr Corbyn more seriously if he was saying these things about the airstrikes already underway against the so-called Islamic State in Iraq. Uh, it seems to me that the position of those people who oppose uh, extending the airstrikes into Syrian territory are being completely irrational and illogical. Uh, as the Prime Minister said, ISIL don't accept that there is a border between Iraq and Syria so how can we? And indeed, we can't. I think it also needs to be stressed, this isn't bombing Syria. All these people who complain, you know, the Stop the War Coalition, this is not a war on Syria, this is a war on the Islamic State. Why should we do it? Well, there was a unanimous Security Council <coughs> resolution calling on all nations to join in the fight against this brutal, sadistic, murderous regime known as the Islamic State. Our, one of our closest allies in Europe, France, was attacked for the fourth time in 2015. The Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, has told us in the past six months seven Islamic State and related attacks have been disrupted in the United Kingdom. This is actually about self-preservation. Okay. But, it, but okay. if, if I may say so, it's about one thing as well, which is what sort of country are we in Britain? Are we going to take charge of our own security or are we going to franchise it out to people like the Kurds? OK, all right. Well, uh, you put a number of arguments in favour, Anthony Glees. Uh, Rachel Shabby, what do you say to all of that? In particular, the argument, which is true, isn't it? Britain is already attacking IS in Iraq. You know, are we exaggerating the importance of moving across a border into Syria to attack them, a border that they don't even recognise themselves? Well, first of all, I think we can all agree that uh, Daesh, Islamic State, needs to be tackled. We can all agree that Syrians and Iraqis deserve to live in peace and security in their own countries. We can all agree that um, Britain and the rest of Europe should not face the kind of uh, threat of terror that we are facing from this group. But I think it's absolutely ridiculous uh, for the British government to suggest that just because ISIS doesn't respect those borders, neither should we. Those are two distinct, separate countries, very different politics, very different histories, very different situations on the ground. But you're opposed to airstrikes in both, are you? What I'm saying to you is that we all agree that we need to to tackle the Islamic State. We don't all agree on the ways that we need to attack mm. them. And given the situation on the ground in Syria, given what we know about that war, given that we know that it's a proxy war on top of a civil war, given that we know about what kind of opposition there is on the ground, as well as what kind of group Islamic State is and how it operates, uh, Cameron has simply not made a convincing case that bombing would be the best way to tackle them but just on the ground in Syria. But just to be clear, do you support or do you not support the current military action against IS in Iraq? I think the current action in Iraq has more, um, makes more sense in, t in, the f in terms of the fact that it was actually requested by the Iraqi government and there is a force on the ground uh, that can join in the effort. No such force exists in Syria and uh, Bashar al-Assad has not requested that. So it's, it's a mess. It doesn't make any sense logically. Anthony Gleese, that is one of the problems, isn't it? Isn't it? You can... You can hit IS with airstrikes, with British airstrikes, but you're not going to destroy them like that. You might degrade them, as the Prime Minister said. You're not going to destroy them. You can only do that with boots on the ground. We're not going to send in boots to the ground. So, you know, what is the point? Well, I think there is a point in slowly degrading the hold that the Islamic State has, both on Syria and Iraq, and uh, threatening their position in Raqqa, which is the nerve centre of that odious odious regime. But there is also the point that if you are hoping to defeat the Islamic State properly, you are going to need boots on the ground. I do accept that. And the question there is, is it other people's boots or is it our boots? And I think the whole of 
uh, Europe, the whole of NATO, I mean, I think this is really an issue for NATO in Article 5 of NATO, that an attack on one is an attack on all. We really have to uh, decide whether our values and the sort of values that we want to see in the world are going to prevail or whether we're going to try and appease people. Are you suggesting, think, sorry, are you suggesting yeah. Western nations should send in ground troops? I think there should be boots on the ground, and I think it was very interesting... British, that British clip, boots on the ground? Well, we've got, an, we've got an armed force, and and what is the point of having an army and not using it to defend our values? And when President Obama said, I was a very significant statement, that climate change and the fight against terrorism were two very similar things, he said, it's a matter of the pace, how quickly this thing will be done. And I think many people in Europe will say to an absent President Obama uh, uh, over this issue of boots on the ground, the pace could be very rapidly speeded up if there were boots on the ground. We are prolonging the agony of the 11 million people in Syria who have been But you're displaced. seriously suggesting that British soldiers should go into action on the ground, enter the quagmire of the Syrian civil war? In the end, I believe it will have to happen. In the end, I believe it will have to happen. I don't think we can rely on people, however brave the Kurdish forces are, and they are extremely brave, okay. they cannot pull our chestnuts out of the okay. fire. OK, Rachel Shabby, what do, what do you say to all of that? Well, um, first of all, uh, the fact that ISIS uh, has its operational base in Raqqa, ISIS is not marching in neat files waiting for us to bomb it. The problem isn't a lack of bombs in Raqqa. The problem is a lack of targets. And if we do drop bombs on that city, you can be certain that civilians are going to die and not Islamic State. They're well, just, we, we keep hearing that so the that, RAF have these brimstone missiles that are incredibly efficient oh, and do not but cause they say, collateral damage. Absolutely. And every time that there is a war, we hear about some amazing new technology that's going to prevent civilians getting killed, and yet they always get killed. So there's no reason to suppose that this time is going to be any different. And indeed, the residents of Raqqa have actually said to us, please tell your MPs not to bomb us because we will get killed. Now, when we look at what we can do, we keep talking about what we can do, what Britain can do. There's lots of things that Britain can do that doesn't involve bombing. For example, what? the right, UNSC what? resolution talked about using all means necessary, uh, including stopping the funding of Islamic State. Uh, well, so, but sanctions are not going to stop IS. What do you mean sanctions? Well, they're what, using, what, 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 they're, what are you talking about? Their, their primary source of funding is oil, which is crossing uh, the Turkish border and being sold. That is their major source of income. Now, if we are to take Turkey at face value and honestly believe that it can't do anything to stop the flow of oil, weapons and fighters across its borders, then maybe we can step up to help with that. The reality is that our... But even if you cut their funds, that isn't going to stop them, is it? That's not going to destroy them. You said earlier on they deserve to be tackled, but just, but just sort of curtailing their financial income isn't going to destroy them. Well, how, do you, how else do you shrink a group if you, don't, if you don't cut off, you don't choke off their fighters, their weapons and their funding? Um, you're trying to tell me that that's not going to degrade them. But more to the point, what we have to accept about this is that, you know, the ugly truth is that our allies, we are allied with countries for whom uh, they are more interested in defending their own interests in Syria than they are in the lives of the Syrian people. And until we tackle that, we're not really going to get anywhere, whatever it is that we do. Anthony Gleeson, I'm just going to come back to you for a sort of final word. Uh, what, what about that point that a different way to tackle them without bombing, uh, without airstrikes, would be to cut off their funds to stop them selling oil. What do you say to that? Well, I think that's al already being done, and I think no, our intelligence community are, are tracking the funding very, very carefully. But uh, as Rachel actually concedes, the right way to deal with this is with the surgical strikes that our RAF people are capable of doing to take out the leadership. And, and the, the, the people will die. Of course, I, I understand that. But far more people have died and will die as long as the Islamic State is there. And the idea that diplomatic means, you know, Jeremy Corbyn says, oh, you know, let's use diplomacy. Of course, it would be wonderful if diplomacy could solve this problem. Okay. But perhaps Mr Corbyn would volunteer to go out there and try a bit of diplomatic negotiating OK, himself. we're out of time and it's all going to be debated in the Commons tomorrow. But thank you so much for airing some of the important issues, uh, Rachel Shabby and uh, Professor of you tonight.